Good afternoon ladies and gents and welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve and you're watching Bush Draft with Steve Outdoors. Hope it all well. So today's video is of a field test variety and today we are testing all weather flammable tinders. Now a number of weeks ago a gent got in contact with me on Instagram asking if I would be interested in checking out a few of his all weather flammable tinders. The company is Twisted Fire Starter and he's been very kind to send over a box loaded full of his fire starting products which we are going to test today. Now Simon does claim that all of his fire starting products are windproof, waterproof and they do follow an old recipe from the Canadian trappers, barring the animal fats. Today we are going to find out if his claims are true. Now if you are an avid bush crafter like myself you'll know the importance of carrying a ready made fire kit around with you as part of your kit. Having a purpose built fire kit or tinder kit as part of your loadout gives you the confidence and the ability to get a fire going in the most adverse conditions. Now any tinder worth its salt must have the ability to be ignited using one of these. This is the classic and traditional fire steel and this is probably the preferred choice of fire starting in the bushcraft community. But you should never be too proud to carry one or two of these as part of your kit. Now I don't care how much of a seasoned bushcrafter you are, you can rub your bum cheeks together for all I care to get fire going. The disposable bick is an indisposable fire lighting tool in a survival situation so you should have at least a couple of these as part of your kit. And the preferred choice is the wheel as opposed to the electronic igniter owl. So ladies and gents, this is the lineup we're working with today and when I was speaking to Simon over Instagram, we had a bit of a laugh because um, I actually thought he called the company Twisted Fire Starter because you've got to twist the lids of pretty much everything to gain access to the tinders inside. Turns out it's absolutely nothing to do with that um, and the reason why it's called Twisted Fire Starter is because all his tinders consist of some kind of um, sort of twisted rope or wood fibre. So there we have it. I'd just like to point out as well before we crack on with this test that none of these tinders currently are suitable for cooking purposes due to the ingredients used. Um, he is working on a new batch of tinders and these can be used with your Crusader uh, canteen cook kits and the uh, solid fuel stove so keep an eye out for them. I've got a pot of water just off to the side of me here. We're going to cut a section off each. Um, so like the fat rope here we're going to cut a section off that. We've also got these pre-cut sort of fat rope tinders as well. So we'll dunk these in the water, give them a few minutes to soak in and then we're going to test them using the disposable Bic lighter and the ferrocene rod or fire steel method. So let's crack on. So we'll start with the fat rope first, we'll take a chunk of that off using the uh, feared wood leshy from Josh at Feared Woods and we're going to dunk these into the pot. Now we have got other tinders here that come in these tins. Um, these you don't really cut up so we'll do these separate. These are like twisted wood fibres there. So we'll tackle the more dense tinders first and then we'll sort out the wood rope twisted fibres. So we'll take one of them. Dunk that in. This one is one of the little slidey tinder trays. You'll have seen these before somewhere about. This is already my personal favourite. <laughs> so we'll just open that slightly to there. We'll dunk that in. We've got these little chapstick kind of tinders as well here. So we can open a bit of this. And we'll also test just how long these actually burn for. That pulled out a little more than I wanted, but never mind. And these are going to be ideal for carrying around um, in, as part of your tinder kit. They weigh absolutely nothing. So these have been soaking now for a few minutes. So we'll take out the biggest piece first, the fat rope. And we'll give that a go with the lighter and the fire steel. So the instructions are to take the paper off, which looks to be paper tape. This can also be used as an extender, so we'll leave that aside and burn that as well. Um, and he says to fluff it up. You can either fluff one end up, or you can fluff both ends up. Um, put it on its end, that will burn longer, he said, like a candle. So, let's fluff that up a little bit. And there we go. So 
So that is the fat wood, which is this one here. And to be honest, I think I cut way too much off there. Half of that um, would be more than sufficient, I think. So we'll try that now with the lighter. No reason why this wouldn't work, and straight away probably. There we go. So next up is my personal favourite so far, the little metallic sliding tray with the wood fibres inside there. So we'll tease a few of these up. The reason I like this um, sort of tinder design so much is because this is retrievable and you can use it on many occasions. So just tease some of that up there. And then first of all we'll try it with a lighter. So yeah, that's going to go up with the lighter. Open a bit more of that, create a bit more surface area, I think. And there we go. So that again has been resting in the water for a good few minutes there. Plenty of time to soak up where it can. Um, and as you can see there, that is fully ignitable. Uh, with the fire steel and the good thing about this again is when you've used what you need you can pull that from the fire once you've got your kindling or tinders ignited and then you can just cover that back and use that again next up we have the pre-cut I would say sort of thinner cigar tinders That leshy is ferociously sharp. So this again is just a matter of twisting fibres up, teasing them out. And these actually come, oh look, they actually come apart into separate sort of plugs. So you can salvage some of that back. Because I think honestly, just this on its own is going to be uh, sufficient to get a fire going. Going off the last one anyway. So we'll have that there. This is obviously going to run off the um, lighter, so we'll try that now. There we go. But the main test is going to be the fire steel once again. And then we can use the paper that comes with it, just to extend that. And again, that's just one of these. We've got two left here. That gives a lovely snap, crackle and pop on. Still loads of fuel left in that. 
So the next one up, and this has been soaking for the longest, this is a little chapstick tinder. Um, so we'll try that with the lighter first. So that's been soaking for at least 25 minutes now, that one. Fully ignitable with the lighter, as you can see. Oh. And I think that one's got that there. Eh? I'd say at that size, if you're cutting off like a quarter inch at a time, you're probably going to get probably around 10 uses off that. So I'm not bad again. I wouldn't say it's as wind resistant as the others. or easily reignited as long as you can still get to that so this one looks to be made up of some sort of jute twine and wood fibres maybe similar to what you get in the packaging in the box I would say this is probably the least effective so far, but benefits of this one, so light, will take up no room in your kit. But it does seem to burn just on the surface, this one, around the surface. Now we have got the trio of tins to try, and I think these are pretty much similar to each other. So again we've got the very fine um, rope fibres and looks like treated wood fibres. This one looks to be just the wood fibres on their own. And this one is a bigger version of this. So let's try these. Let's go with a smaller one first. So you can pull out wads of this. Scrunch that up into a ball and we'll drop that in the water for a couple of minutes so again these have now been soaking for around five minutes so we'll squeeze out what's left of the water in there fluff these up and see if that won't take with the lighter my hands are becoming a little bit uh, tacky now. So that straight away looks to be doing a little bit better than uh, the first one we tried, but these do look like thicker fibres to this. So we'll give that a yes, that will start 
with the light so let's see if it burns a bit longer. Definitely not as wind resistant um, as the, the other tinders we've tried so far. Easily reignitable. Right, let's try that with the fire steel now. Just see some of these fibres open. I am decimating this fire steel. <laughs> And that one will start with the fire steel, even when it's been dunked. So that's the flip lid with the larger fibres. So that will light with a lighter when wet. It will light with a fire steel when wet, not as wind, uh, wind resistant as the rest of them. I will say when that's um, actually established a good flame, it is a little bit more wind resistant. So it's just more delicate obviously as it's um, getting going. So the last one up looks to be a combination of the very thin uh, cotton fibres, rope fibres there and the sort of thin wood fibres. So we'll try some of this now. Take out a wad, screw this up. This feels very wet out of the tin. And we are still going to dunk this because that is the important part of the test. <laughs> so we'll leave that in there. I'm not sure how the wood fibres are going to perform because I know they're going to absorb quite a bit of that water. Right, that's had a good few minutes in there. So we'll pull everything out we put in, squeeze off the excess. And I am going to say I am not confident with this one. Um, straight from the go-guys unfortunately. Just going off the performance of the thin rope fibres we tried before. But you never know, them wood fibres may help it along. So we'll try that first with the lighter. So, it's all very well lighting these tinders with a lighter, like I say, in a survival situation, but you should be able to light these with a fire steel because, again, this is the preferred method um, of the bush crafter. Tease a few of these apart. Just get a few flakes in there. And this again is suffering from the same sort of problem as the thinner fibres. I think with them being so thin, no matter how much um, chemical they've absorbed, it is only a very, very small surface area, so it's going to absorb the water on top of that as well. Oh, that's my scientific thinking anyway. Thinking. I, I am just truly decimating my fire steel here now. So we'll give it 
One last go. Right, so that is a non starter, unfortunately. And ladies and gents, remember when I said the disposable bick is indisposable in a survival situation? Well, mine has just broke. I think the spring or the flint has gone. Well, that is why we carry duplicates, redundancies, because as they say, one is none, two is one. So, in my traditional fire kits, and we do carry another small disposable bick. Oh, two in there, see? I'm a smart arse. So out of all the products we've tested today from Twisted Firestar to these would be my recommendations. I will leave all links down in the description box so you can go and check these out yourself. Um, I am not privy to any prices so you will have to go and check the website but he is um, a one man band at the minute making these himself. Um, the gent's name is Simon and he has been a pleasure to talk to. So unfortunately when it comes to bushcraft tinders the market is very saturated and it's hard to come up with a unique product. And as a friend of mine always says, there is nothing new under the sun. But I think Simon from Twisty Fire Starter is off to a good start. And he has uh, come up with three great products here that I will be adding to my kit. So go and check him out. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. Absolutely fantastic, awesome folks for coming over and supporting me and my beautiful missus on our journey. I would also like to extend a special thanks to my channel members who have gone that extra step just to support the channel a little bit more. We are currently at seven members. If we get one more, I can line all of your pretty faces up on the channel dashboard. So, who will be number eight? That's all from me on this video. Until the next one, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.